And welcome again, this is Philip Steiger at TheBest3D.com and um, we are continuing the series of tutorials for uh, exploring, uh, creating some fantasy mountain scenes, snowy hills, uh, rocky hills. Uh, we'll, we'll also explore creating caves and walking and, and uh, flying through them or swimming even underwater stuff. Um, at this time uh, I'm looking at a very short animation uh, and we will be exploring some of the animation techniques uh, to create something like this. Uh, you know, This might be a background, you will compose it with something else, maybe uh, you use Carrara or some other like Lightway 3D or some other 3D program and you have a spaceship or an airplane that you want or maybe just a bird or something that's gonna go uh, fly in front of this um, and you just need to use this as a backdrop. So there's many different uses for scenes like these and as you learn to create these with uh, Howler it'll be all the more rewarding. Uh, one thing you notice also we have some, some strange uh, features, some spokes here, some pillars of some sort uh, starting to appear and while these are not trees um, you might perhaps think of cactuses in some cacti <laughs> in some places or uh, whatever we want them to to represent uh, we may need to work on the coloring a little bit um, if it is to be an organic structure but if it's uh, sediments or uh, some rock formation uh, plain gray like we have here is fine uh, one thing that we also want to explore or keep in mind of course is that once you've created an animation you might want to have perhaps only a small portion of it maybe not this entire scene maybe just a small from here to here or something like that but you need it much slower maybe you need uh, that to last 10 seconds right and right now we have 129 uh, frames if we play this at uh, 30 frames a second we know that's gonna last about four seconds and uh, a, f a fraction of that so <clears throat> let's say we wanted to have something like going from here from the beginning to about here uh, and then the rest will delete so I'm gonna set the in marker and the out marker and right click here to delete the block I just defined so I have the first 70 frames here and how to slow that down to make it a, a nice uh, smooth animation in the animation subcategory uh, for the the filters animated uh, you'll see the motion prediction module that's an interpolator or a smooth interpolation that uh, if you let it run, uh, do the dry run first, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to look uh, for where the pixels are moving or where the blocks are moving. You can set the size of these blocks. Uh, each of these is going to be tagged with a uh, motion sensor, a motion tracker, <coughs> and it's going to see where it moved. And uh, you can usually just use the default parameters uh, unless things move too fast. So if you see any sort of artifacts, any sort of swimming or you know rippling or some other distortions, especially when things overlap on others, there are some limitations with uh, what you can use this for. But uh, this happens to be a scene where it actually might work just fine. Uh, and so <coughs> when you test it like that and you say, okay, let's see what, what if we do 11 tweens per frame, right? Between the first and the next frame or the current frame and the next frame will inject another 10 or 11 frames here. Um, and so what that lets you do is create uh, 700 frames out of that uh, and have them come, you know, make it a very smooth, short uh, resulting animation. Now, maybe that's too long. Maybe that's uh, too many. So let's say, how about we do eight? Um, and uh, we might want to do a refinement pass or some subsampling. That's especially if the, the video is noisy, if there's a lot of uh, changes from one frame to another, you may want to do subsamples. But uh, let's just see uh, if uh, that's going to work. I think this should work fine. So what I'm going to do is stop this, uncheck the dry run and go. So this is just a reminder that uh, we don't have just a paint program here. We don't just have a uh, 3D landscape generation program here. We also have a video and special effects box. And so we can take some existing short clips and make them uh, different, more interesting, uh, very slow, uh, interpolated, super slow-mo and that sort of things uh, using the motion estimated interpolation. We call that the motion interpolator. <coughs> so here we have now uh, 544 frames. 
Uh, the first one is actually a copy of the last one, so that's that's one artifact or call it a limitation if you want, or a side effect of that. We usually just delete that, and now we have a nice animation that goes very smoothly, very few uh, side effects in terms of uh, strobing or flickering or texture aliasing or anything like that. Uh, you usually will get, for this kind of scenario, will get some really nice animation. And it took next to no time. That's the thing about it, is that it, it takes far less time to, to do this motion interpolation than to render those uh, tween frames, right? If I had rendered, because uh, even this initial animation, uh, the original one, took about an hour to render at the highest level of anti-aliasing. And um, if I had rendered ten times as many, it would have it would not be done yet. You know, I would not even be done half of it. But uh, with the motion interpolation, you get several orders of magnitude better performance, uh, and usually the quality is good enough. Especially if in the end you're going to put this into blurry mode for the background, you don't want to see it anyway, right? <laughs> so it doesn't need to be the absolute best that you would get if you were to render it. <coughs> it's usually good enough if you interpolate it. So I wanted to show that, <coughs> and uh, now let's talk about something else. <coughs> and that something else is actually uh, going to be a compositing of uh, a sky on top of this. Now, uh, we'll actually do a couple of things. We'll do a sky which, um, which, which came from a photograph, and then we'll do another sky um, which perhaps we created, or also from a photograph. So we'll composite two skies, and then we'll put that on top of this. And, or, or a similar scene, maybe with a crisper drop off on the horizon. Um, <coughs> but the, there are a number of techniques that we can uh, put together here, uh, and perhaps really get a, a nice three-dimensional depth perception on that. So the way I'll start is perhaps create a very simple scene, uh, not much fanciness on the scene, just so we have something we can work with. Okay, so I'm gonna go and free the current animation, and then I'm gonna go put this uh, in there and say, uh, maybe make it a little bit smaller for sake of performance. We'll resample this down to, let's say, uh, 640 <coughs> by 360. There, let's take one of those standard HD or quad HD quarter of uh, high definition uh, resolutions. Let's go and uh, change to this. Okay, the backdrop still has the colors that got uh, resampled as well. And um, what I'll do is I'll store both of these. So here we go. Store that one and store that one. So we have quick way to to get back to these two. Uh, this we don't need anymore, this we don't need. We save them anyway, that's the thing I recommend also, is that you save them to files, uh, so we can restore them. So now let's uh, do a quick creation of that terrain, um, and um, that would be simply done by uh, going to the timeline. Actually, we need to turn this into an animation first, right? So. Let's create an animation of uh, just 99 frames. Again, we, we're, we're going to check and learn how to do this, not so much really do this perfectly right now, just to learn the techniques. And what we'll do is we'll create an animation of 30, uh, 99 frames, so it will last a bit more than three seconds as we play it at 30, uh, 30 frames per second. And then we'll go into the timeline over here, and the timeline editor is essentially uh, very similar to the list of filters we have here in the filters menu, but it lets you keyframe and set the parameters and keyframe them across the timeline. So you can uh, you can use that if you want to have something turn from blue to green or you know do some other effects. And many of these filters do have parameters that can be keyframed. Not all of them do, but uh, certainly uh, 3D Designer has a few. Before we see those parameters, though, we'll be able to uh, just see the scene as such. Uh, let's go get rid of the clouds for now. Let's get rid of a couple of things, in fact. Uh, let's go make it a relatively simple scene. Uh, let's get rid of the, f the distant fog. That's this one here. And make it a bit brighter on here. Or, or perhaps, incre yeah, let's just use that. There you go. Uh, put the, the sun on something like this side, um, not too bright, there you go, uh, give it a little bit of uh, smoothing and uh, a bit more perspective, 
There you go. And what I want to do really, oh, and actually let's really make it like a snowy uh, type of mountain we've seen before. So let's not use the the swap image. Let's see what we get here. Oh, there you go. It's something more, uh, just plain color white, okay? And perhaps that's a little bit too much. There you go. So what I'm going to do is simply fly into that and uh, we'll keep the background sky at a very different color. That could be a green screen, right? Something we don't have down here. Why? Because I want to use it for color keying. I want to lay the key in and composite a different sky in here, which itself is also going to be animated. That will be the trick. Um, we can later then explore uh, doing the whole thing with even an additional layer of clouds, some puffy clouds down here that uh, we will perhaps uh, also see. And uh, that will be something like this. And of course, it'd be nice to see them perhaps appear on the side. Sometimes you don't really need to have them in the middle of the scene. Uh, more as a little side uh, sidekick there, right? A little side effect to get the attention and perhaps uh, give it a little bit of a ground fog resulting effect there. It's not necessarily to be seen as clouds up in the sky, right? So something like that, that could actually be really interesting too. So let's see, perhaps we'll see it from this angle. So let's keep that in mind. We can bring those clouds later. Let's first keep it simple and not do that and simply do a little bit of erosion, a little bit of sediments. And uh, you know what, that's a little bit too much sediments. Let's do something like that. There you go. All right, so that will be our, um, our animation. Let's not worry about the perfection on the quality here. Let's not even do any anti-aliasing, right? So it may have a little bit of flickering. It may have a little bit of scintillation. That's okay. Uh, at this point, let's uh, say we use green as the, the green screen, you know, as the, the mechanism by which we'll be able to composite something else into that. Um, you can choose blue. If you don't have blue colors down here or anything close to it, you can choose pink. You can choose whatever color. Make it a unique one that you don't already have in the scene itself or not likely anything close to that. All right, so let's go and uh, actually fly through that. Let's go and uh, tell our um, designer here, let's see, something like this scene. Um, and then with the right button, I can zoom back a little bit until I'm uh, at the right distance and keyframe the first position for that over here. And then I'll go to the end of it and we'll simply move into the scene. So right button, move in, and we don't want to get too close. So maybe we'll go a little bit Oh, you know what? Actually, no, we do want to, to really just move forward. Again, let's keep it simple at first and worry about other things later on. Um, so we will have this thing here pretty close, but we might move a little bit to the side and perhaps move down a little bit, something like, th like that. Okay, so so essentially we'll we'll go and fly into the scene. We don't need to go all the way through it though. Let's just go about this much there. Okay, keyframe that and apply that and see if that's about what we want. That's good. Yeah, we don't want to fly too much. And here we go. Let's have a look at that scene. Okay, so here's our scene. Uh, again, ignore the flickering. We didn't do any anti-aliasing. We didn't do the best quality on the rendering. We just kept it really short and quick. All right? But what I want to do is uh, focus on this background sky that's currently green. We want to composite something else in there now. All right? So uh, first of all, we'll store this animation and store it to disk so we don't waste any precious memory for that. Uh, we'll close the timeline. And so now the question is, well, how do we composite a different sky in there? And also, do we have another sky? So one thing I'll do is say, yes, we'll go grab another sky. I do have uh, a sky here somewhere uh, that's directly from the camera, from my Canon camera. Uh, I have a couple of photographs here and some of them at fairly wide angle. And I think I'm going to grab this one here. Right, or this one here. The idea is to get something that's interesting that kind of fits roughly into the scene the way you'll have it. So either wide angle or telephoto and perhaps on the lighting might also be interesting and somewhat correlated. This one here is interesting because we have the sun 
kind of uh, ready for sunset or sunrise. So we have a little bit of illumination. And if in the scene, the lighting is also coming from the direction in which the sun would be placed, there is a good correlation. This, uh, the thing you have to pay attention to is that the, the lighting that you have on your mountains are, is indeed coming not from the side, but from ahead, if you're looking in this direction where the sun is, right? However, if you cut this up or if you crop it to only use a portion of it and the sun ends up being on the left side or on the right side, uh, then it would be fair game. You could use that too. All right, so let's, uh, let's use this one here. All right, so I'm gonna <coughs> open that. This one's in earphone view. Um, doesn't actually really matter. I could also just copy that straight into uh, Howler. So let's go do that. We did take a snapshot here. It's stored animation. So what I can do is uh, either open it first in some image viewer like if and view uh, and then um, copy it. Let's say copy that and uh, paste it as a new image. Under the image menu, you could go to the clipboard and paste new image. All right, so that's one way to do this. And now we have uh, the animation no more, but we do have this image. And what I'd like to do is really uh, consider that eventually we'll put a portion of that sky into this one, right? This is the animation we have stored and I want the sky uh, to be up here. But even more sophisticated than that, I want it to actually be animated also. So I will need to do a few more things to that, uh, but let's first just see how do we get uh, this guy into this image. Well, there's a couple of different ways to do that. One thing I'd like to do is that we we use a, a portion of this image and make it the same dimension as we have here, or close enough, right? <coughs> let's get rid of the cropped information here, or let's uh, mask it off, or just make sure it will stay below those uh, mountains. So that's uh, pretty much a given. So one thing we could do is simply turn this image into a smaller dimension. Let's say resample it to exactly the same. What was it, 640 by 360? Right, something like that. Uh, yeah, I know it's going to be a little bit distorted. It's not going to be the exact uh, same aspect ratio. You got some some stuff happening here. Uh, not ideal, but you know, good enough, right? So what I'll do is I'll store this image, and then I'll uh, say I want this one to be going back as the current animation. There you go. Click on that. That will restore it. And now, how do I get this image? to show in here where the green part is. Well, uh, that's called compositing, and we have a filter, uh, a couple of ways to do that, but one of them is to composite with swap. That means we need to put this image into the swap, into the swap image, it used to be called the swap buffer. Uh, it's a placeholder like the backside of your canvas or just another layer behind it. And <coughs> what we'll do is we'll simply need to put that into the swap image. In fact, you can uh, click on this little thing here and say uh, paste into swap, scale it to fit, right? So it's now in the swap image. You can check that by clicking the little S here for uh, toggling back and forth between the main image and the swap image. And so uh, as we do that, now you can say filter, um, uh, composite with swap, green screen, boom. Wherever the green is from the main image, it's gonna go away and it's gonna show the image that's actually in swap. Right now you can adjust this a little bit if you need to and then uh, okay that or animate it meaning take that same scenario for the entire sequence now the animation in front here is moving the green part is moving is changing right the horizon doesn't say the same so there are different parts that are going to be green and then later on no longer or vice versa right now we see the mountain here but as we go past it the mountain will move to the left and uh, the green part that we have initially in this area here is going to be covered by the mountain, whereas there's new green areas showing here. That's all going to work this perfectly. So we apply this as an animation and we have the sky appearing like that. All right. Now, so that's good, but it's not perfect. It's, uh, it's not quite there yet, because uh, one thing that we uh, understand is obviously, even though the sky is really far away, it would still show a little bit of movement as well uh, and for two reasons. One is, you know, we get closer to it, but that's a very minute change in the, the, the clouds are not going to get bigger or appear to come closer to us, but they may disappear over our heads, right? So that may be something to take care of. Another thing would be perhaps to do something about the following, uh, you know, the camera is moving, it's changing direction. We're looking a little bit more to the right as we move forward here. So one thing we may need to do is actually have this thing also shift sideways, 
right? So we're talking now about a little bit more sophistication here. And there's a couple of different ways we can do it. I want to just explore one technique, which is to actually have the sky itself be an animation and then composite this animation with the animated sky. Right. And we can therefore kind of prepare the sky to have a movement that goes, takes it a little bit to the left, moves it a little bit up, and kind of makes it look like it's really uh, above our skies in sort of a spherical way above, above our head. So uh, let's go back to restoring this image and uh, see what we'll need to do next to actually work with this one. In fact, what I'm going to do is really restore this one first. I'm going to go and uh, say I want this, uh, but uh, actually not this version. This one is the, I think this one's a stored small image. What I want to do is grab that original one we had originally. So I'm gonna go back to uh, image uh, clipboard. It's still in the clipboard, I'm sure. So, I, or, or I could load it from file. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, paste new image. And so I have a new image here. I'm going to close this. I don't have the animation anymore. Um, <coughs> I'm going to go and grab a portion of the sky, right? The idea is to say, well, there's a whole really interesting looking area here, perhaps, that I can use. And I might even perhaps squeeze it a little bit more into more of a perspective uh, appearance, right? So I might uh, expand it over here and here do a little expansion thing and then kind of squeeze it a little bit to the inside. Uh, and we do that with one of the transform filters here. Um, forget which one it is, but we'll find it. The rubber sheet probably, all right? So with the rubber sheet, you could say, yeah, let's grab this one here in a little bit, this one out, and that will just apply a nice little transform to this entire image um, that, uh, that should uh, get us a little bit more of that perspective distortion. This took quite a while, by the way, because that's still the very big original image. All right, now, so I did that uh, having painted on it, which means now I really can't use this entire image the way I normally would. Uh, so I'm going to go and undo that, Control-Z, uh, and Control-Z again, and go back to the point where, oh, no, I don't have enough undo levels stored for this. You know what, let's just go to Image, uh, Clipboard, New Image. It's still in the Clipboard. And uh, this time I'm going to uh, crop first. I'm going to use the image and uh, crop crop that image. There's the crop tool right there. Or you could do a selection, like a rectangular selection, and crop to that selection. That would be a really uh, clever way to do it too. So crop tool is a good way as well. Um, and what I'll do is I'll move down a little bit and then drag it up. I don't want the cloud, uh, the sky here, or I mean the, the trees, or at least I don't want much of it, right? And then right click and crop to that. All right, so now I can uh, zoom out a little bit and uh, perhaps make this image smaller. It, it really is uh, very big. So I'm gonna go and resample because I have a camera with like 18 million pixels. Um, I'm gonna go down to, let's say uh, 1600. Right. Oh, and I need to constrain that, so undo that and go in again. Uh, resample, uh, constrain, I want to say about 1600 times, and perhaps even less, you know, let's do 1200. Because the, the animation itself is 640 by 360. So I've got plenty I can work with here. Uh, I don't like odd numbers. I'm going to go and say, uh, make that 720. All right. So there you go. So we have a very usable sky here. Uh, we may want to, as I showed uh, earlier, want to do a little bit of additional uh, transform on that with the rubber sheet. And uh, with that rubber sheet, I could say, let's uh, bring it into a little bit more of a squeezed appearance than at the horizon and a little bit uh, wider at the top, right? So that way, uh, you, you get even more of that uh, strong perspective feeling. Now, that depends on how noisy the picture is or if there's any parallel features from clouds, uh, pl cloud patterns that are normally perceived to be parallel, and now you see them a little bit more in a conic or some other distorted fashion. So <coughs> I'm going to go really and crop to that. So again, um, let's go to the crop tool, and uh, this time I'm going to say keep the bottom here, Keep the top here. Let's put it in place. Uh, let's uh, make sure we get just about everything we need here. And hopefully that's still going to be big enough that we don't see the corners. Right click crop 
And yeah, I think that's still bigger. Let's see the dimensions on the image info. Uh, yeah, it's bigger than 640. That's good. All right, so I'm going to store this image and then start working on animating it. Store image copy. So remember, one thing we want to do um, is to to animate this image so that it kind of moves gradually up and, and like over our heads as we are flying into this scene. And then we also want to add something like, um, um, you know, maybe a little drift to the side because the camera seems to be not going straight ahead. It's moving a little bit to the right. So what we could do is also drift it a little bit sideways. All right, so we need to know how many frames we had. What was that, 99 frames? Hey, it doesn't matter if it's more. We can do something like, like you know, 100, 120 or so. So let's go and build a placeholder, ideally exactly the same number. There you go, 99 frames. And um, oh, let's make it also play at 30 frames per second. Make sure that's the case here. And so now, um, how do we transform that so it gradually moves up over our head without uh, moving uh, away too far at the horizon? It's kind of a moving and a zooming at the same time. Um, and then there's also the drifting to the side. So uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. Uh, let's try the timeline. And with the timeline, what you could do is simply go to uh, the transform group. Uh, I think that's one, two, three. And uh, there's a transform. And then there's also the shift. So we'll do a little bit of both. The transform allows you to actually do a shift as well. Um, but uh, if, you, if you do that, you don't see the replication or tiling or something like that. So be careful about that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll scale it gradually, just very little. It's not a lot we need, really. We're not really flying into the sky here. So just a tiny little motion. So reset that, go to the first frame, and uh, keyframe it right there. There's a plus to add a keyframe, and then go to the end. And what we'll do with this one, we'll just scale up a little bit. It's very subtle. Don't do too much there. And keyframe that. Oh, maybe not yet. Maybe we can also make sure that the bottom doesn't disappear. Because you see, if you do scale it up too much, you see the bottom disappears, right? That's not good. We want to keep the bottom uh, staying there and perhaps even reveal more. So the idea is that we, we should perhaps actually have it pre-scaled. We should have initially already a little bit of a scale. Uh, let's go and uh, erase all the keys and uh, start at the first frame and actually pre-scale it a little bit. That way we have some margins to work with. That way we can actually afford to move up and show more as we get closer to it. Right? If you don't initially pre-scale, then uh, you're already stuck with the outer uh, border. Uh, so what I'd like to do is something like that. I'm going to go, um, you know, it also needs to move, uh, as the camera turns to the right, it needs to move the scene to the left, the background sky a little bit to the left. Again, very subtle, but uh, we should be able to see that. So I'm going to go around here and then go to the end and a uh, tiny little move addition on the scale. Again, very subtle, but uh, cer certainly a little bit of movement, uh, both sideways and a little bit down. Uh, excuse me, a little bit up, right? Because we are starting to reveal more closer to the horizon uh, and keyframe that. So now we have a movement that goes like that. Now, whether that's too much or not, I'll let you debate that. You can experiment with that a little bit. Maybe too much side movement there. Right, so what you could do is perhaps go grab this keyframe, and if it's difficult, just make this window a little bit bigger. You can grab this keyframe, position it where it needs to be, and then um, actually use the translate here to make sure it doesn't translate that much. Right, so you can use this one here to say, well, I want it to translate a little bit, but not quite that much. Right, so keyframe, and then add this keyframe. So now you have this position here, and it does shift a little bit to the right, but just not that much. All right, apply that. And what we're now doing is everything, right? We're transforming, we're shifting, we're zooming in a little bit, uh, or scaling in, and we now have that movement that we need for the sky. Okay, <coughs> and um, what else do we need? Well, that's basically it in terms of preparing the sky. So let's go store that one too, right? Remember we had, uh, we did store this sky here, so we can work with it again later. And we need to do that also with this sky now. So, because this one here is just an image that we stored. But on the animation, we can store an animation and say do that on the disk. 
and so now we have a stored copy of the sky uh, animated sky and a stored copy of the animated terrain right, this one here and we'll put that one back in so how do we now turn this thing as the background sky over in this scene remember how we did that when we used the image the image had to be in the swap image the swap image right there well, okay right there that's how we put that in and then the green in the main in the animation was basically going to take care of showing us what we want to see and uh, we did that by going to the filter menu and say uh, composite with swap and on green right that was cool but it's not what we want to do in this case in this case we want the animation to not come from a single image in the swap we want it to be a copy or the same thing as what we see here in this moving sky we can actually say hey let's use this as the swap image right it's not there right now right now in the swap we have just this one static image but what we can do is flag this one as what's going to go into the swap when it's needed frame for frame as we render through this animation we will need to grab one frame at a time from this stored animation that's why we have this thing here use animated swap image use as animated swap image so click that now this animation is in the swap image as we go through it when we need it as we render and composite things right so um you can't really see it because it's in the swap if you toggle over you'll see it possibly but it hasn't been placed there yet it wasn't needed you still see the old one with the house tops there so uh you could possibly do a composite of the two right here right click on that and say uh mixing mode green screen and uh and then blend the two together and hallelujah now you see them both together and as you scrub through that nothing's happening but as you scrub through that you see the sky move right you notice that that's because we have that sky being pulled from the checked object here from the dog waffle animation that's stored we pull that into the swap we then composite it boom that's it now you could uh, actually at this point just apply that or you could do let's see uncheck that and say uh, actually do the same thing but uh, instead of doing this uh, through this uh, technique do it here in the timeline editor right because we have the same filters if you scroll down further we have the displace or composite or composite with swap there it is you can composite it against an image sequence too right i mean if you have these skies as an image sequence on a file perfect composite it that way but in this case here i'll use the green screen with the swap the swap itself is animated and we are therefore getting that nice composition going there uh you can adjust the low clip and so on artificial green whatever is needed uh defaults usually just fine but adjust it if necessary and you can also adjust it and change the keyframe that's actually a nice effect look at that if you say low clip or high clip let's see where it needs to be there right now here we have high clip and um you know low clip all of them at the max uh so you don't you end up not seeing the sky behind it let's keyframe that right let's say we want it initially like that then we go and by about this much here we want to actually see the sky so you gradually bring these down to more reasonable not too high because the sky might disappear altogether the, the terrain the land might disappear altogether so make sure you don't give it too much of that uh, there's a little fine line there uh, there let's find it like this keyframe that and so now you can see how it's gradually actually quite suddenly changing here there is a little transition though and so if you want that to be a smoother transition what you do is you perhaps go a little bit slower right you go like this here and um, perhaps bring this guy in first but then uh, wait a little bit on uh, on the the low clip or the high clip so whichever way you set that up you can see how the sky is gradually going to come in okay and then you apply that that now applies that transition and the sky initially is not visible play it see no sky and now the sky is in all right so that's one way to uh take care of business right one one way to combine uh an animation with another animation through the green screen well, or whatever blue screen alpha screen even if you if you use the alpha um 
from files, like let's say you have a se series of PNG files, a PNG sequence, uh, it could actually be an alpha composition. <coughs> that alpha could come <coughs> from the files, I believe, <coughs> and if not, you could actually have an animated alpha selection. The alpha channel can be coming from a selection as well. So lots more to explore there. And in fact, one thing we could do is perhaps work on that sky to be even more sophisticated. How could we do that? Well, for instance, we could composite it with another sky. Then we get the impression of perhaps a higher level of clouds and then a lower level of deep uh, rainy clouds. And then in the scene that you render here, you might actually have some clouds as well at yet another level, like those puffy ones, perhaps not over the horizon, still below uh, in the valley, to just give yet another level of cloudiness to that. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to do just that. So I'm going to go back to this elevation map. I'm going to go and create my terrain. Again, that's, uh, what was it, 99 frames at 30 frames per second. There you go, 99 frames. And I'm going to uh, <coughs> get my uh, 3D animation here. Um, what was it? Uh, one, two, three. And 3D designer. And this time, uh, we still have a green background, but this time we'll also add um, the clouds uh, from something like this one here, the puffy ones. And not too bright, not too dark either, just a good mix. Try a little bit, experiment with these parameters. Be careful not to fly into it too much. It, it varies a bit by what type of graphics card you have and how robust it is. Uh, on mine, I do get of occasionally this thing to hang. Um, it's either a bug or it's a bug, right? It's either our bug or it's a bug in the graphic card. Who knows? We haven't explored that uh, in detail yet. Uh, so if you do have some problems with it, you know that your graphics card is unfortunately not going to handle that too well until we figure out a way to work around it. Uh, so one thing I uh, would avoid if you have the problem is it's okay to uh, move these clouds sideways but if you move them towards you, don't get too close to them. It may end up taking forever to render. It may appear hung. It may actually be hung. But uh, that's one of those where it's a bit difficult to know exactly what's going on. I'm going to go and change the terrain a little bit. Uh, something like this. I'm going to change the camera a little bit too. Uh, let's see, something like that. And uh, the brightness of the clouds. Uh, they get a green tint here because they are kind of blended to the background color as well. Um, so maybe blue color might be a little bit better. Again, as long as the color is different from anything you have in the terrain. You don't want to see bullet holes through that terrain. So let's see if we can, for instance, get a, a blue screen going here. Not too much white on that. <coughs> and uh, at least that won't look too shocking with the blue in the clouds. Still a little bit, and maybe you need to adjust the darkness there or the brightness to just not see too much of that. Um, and then, uh, let's see what else. We could perhaps uh, move back a little bit. Well, that will be part of the animation, right? As we animate and fly through that, uh, what we could do is perhaps look at it from the side, something like that. All right. And um, this time we'll also add some anti-aliasing and just give it a little bit better quality that way. Uh, let's make sure, make sure we have some erosion, make sure we have some sediment, and perhaps make this a little bit wider and deeper. There. So now we have this with the clouds down below. We will later add the clouds above. Um, what else do we need here? We need to move back a little bit, or a lot, uh, something like this. I uh, want to make sure the clouds are not too close. There you go. Something like that. Uh, let's make that our starting point and then go to the very end over here and kind of zoom in and stay up a little bit. So grab the Y axis position here and stay up. And then also turn a little bit to the to the right. Because we remember we move, we added that motion, that movement to the sky where the clouds uh, appear to be moving sideways. So there we go. Perhaps we can also move our camera to the right a little bit. There. So keyframe that. And so now we have a little movement of this sort. Right? Apply that. So now we have two things that move again. We have the terrain, 
and we have the clouds in a separate animation that's over here waiting to be composited again into this uh, blue screen area. Now this is going to be an interesting one because we have some blue in the, in the terrain here, right? And that's obviously one where we will need to worry about it. We will need to say, well, what can we do to not actually have the blue that's here turn transparent just like the blue that's up here? We may want to work with a mask instead of just the blue screen, right? So we may need to use this animation and zoom in with very low tolerancing on exactly this blue. This one is a uniform blue, so there's only one specific blue color we're looking for. And we may want to uh, adjust the contrast on that selection so that it will really only give us this. Then we can actually turn that into an animated selection mask that we will check here to say use as animated selection. And when we do the composition, we really just do a blending of the two through the alpha channel. So that's a different technique. It will work just fine as well. So, um, well, I think that's enough for today for this first intro on working a bit more on the advanced side with these terrain animations. You know, it's one thing to understand how to create the River Canyon, and we've seen at least 20 different tutorials on that now. It's another thing to then take that into the animated world and on top of that add, literally speaking, right, pun intended, on top of that add another sky that uh, may actually not even be a sky. Maybe you're going to be on the inside of a space station. I don't know if you saw the movies lately, but um, you can always imagine being inside of a uh, floating planet or uh, orbiting uh, artificial world. So you'll have some sort of a cylindrical cover over your head. And that's what I'm talking about. Maybe you render that in a different program or in here. Now you want to composite that. Whether it's a sky, whether it's a artificial scaffolding or structure over your head, whatever it is, there are ways to composite that. And that what we are, that's what we are going to explore here. All right, thanks for watching.